Right, so if I was going to prepare this for a dog's tooth, in terms of the buttresses, uh, obviously, I don't really, see that flare at the back? Yeah. I don't really want to take that flare off. Yeah, because that's slight. Because obviously that's, that's, that's actually going to be quite helpful for me to leave on. Um, so when you pick a tree, you obviously want to make sure it's like big enough for the bottom and look, quite a lot of these uh, alders, they, they do flare quite a bit at the bottom. So even if it's a skinny one like that, you should, if you're careful, you should still be able to get a uh, dog tooth in if you do it lower down, yeah? If you're doing it higher up, so it's less than 20 centimetres, that's where you might use the um, double V, yeah? So in this one, obviously, um, this is a th thicker one. There's all them flies come from. So I'm going to have the um, ability to, to bore all the way through this, okay? So I'm going to put my gob cut in as normal. I'm going to put the hinge markers out as normal. And then I'll stop and have a chat with you then. So anything that's leaning, and like we discussed earlier, it's so, it, this prevents it from barber chairing because it'll, t it'll cut out those middle fibres before the tree's been detached at the back, yeah? that gob isn't it and one of the one of the dangers of uh, doing a dog's tooth if you haven't taken the, the buttresses off the side is that you don't have enough like your bar's not uh, too small to plunge all the way through the tree does that make sense so you want to be absolutely guaranteed so in this case what I'm going to do I'm just going to cut take those buttresses uh, off the, on the sides and then that should uh, Make sure your bar goes all the way through. Allow me to make sure that my bar goes all the way through. I've gone in like a fly's nest or something. Yeah. You see how it flares quite a bit over this side, doesn't it? So I'm going to leave this nice chunky bit at the back, mark it out my hinge. So, when I start the back cut on this, I'm not going to be able to be in that knob over gob position. I'm not going to be able. I'm not going to be able to be far enough over here to stop me from getting kicked back. Yeah. So I have to start a bit further back to get the saw into the tree. Once the saw's in the tree, all the way. I need to take, and this is like um, a big, big step. So you need to then reposition yourself. Once the saw's in and not kicking back anymore, bore it in, take a big, massive step so you are in that position. Because if you don't, what, what will happen is you'll bore too far through and you'll, bore, you'll be in the wrong angle and you'll go straight through the corner of your hinge on the other side. Because people will be thinking that they're boring in straight, but they're not. So, to do it safely, you need to do a big, big old step over. Okay, so I'm just going to mark my height and I'm going to go straight for the, for the ball cut. It about about where that mark is. Thank you. 
It's rotten on the inside. Good job of sharpening that, wasn't it? Okay, so all that's attached now, it's all right out there, is basically where those two sticks are. Yeah? Not now, but it's holding it up. So all I need to do now is chop down, meet those two sticks together, and it should just go. Because obviously you're not doing, this is not a cut where you're anticipating you're gonna to need to lever it. Yeah, so all I'm gonna do, and you can start, I can either stand this side or I can stand that side, it doesn't really matter. Whichever is, has the best escape route is probably where I would prefer to stand. So I've obviously got the logs here this side, so I'm just gonna stand that side and do it. So if that, if that had any weight in it, just go down like that, okay? So probably what I could have done to protect my saw from getting blunt is move it a bit higher into some, some more sound wood. Yeah. But that's how the cut basically should look. Will that blunt it? <clears throat> Will that be it will do, yeah. That, will it blunt it then? Yeah, yeah. It's probably the same cutting through that bit there, to be honest. So yeah, you basically, you're boring out the hole of the middle of it, setting your hinge, and then coming back, leaving 20%, and then that's, it's basically like a trigger. Yeah? Yeah. And you're just releasing the trigger and then getting out of your escape route. 